I'm going to test the radioactivity of uh, these three different versions of the Fujinon uh, 55 millimeter f2.2 lens. Um, these are kind of sought after for their uh, bubble bokeh effect. It's basically when you take photos with these, they have sort of a rounded specular highlight in the background bokeh, so the bubbles will tend to have a little bit of a ring around them, and a lot of people like that sort of look about them. Uh, there's a few different versions of this lens. Um, the early ones uh, were a little bit larger, and then the next ones that came around, these they had shrunken down in size just a little bit. Both of these are M42 mount lenses, the screw-in style from some of the older uh, Fujika ST cameras. They came as a stock lens on a lot of those, just your kit lens is what this was. Um, but both are just well made. You can tell by the way the uh, the printing on both of these are and the, the thickness of the two. But the mounts are the same between them and the uh, elements inside. The uh, layout of the lens is pretty much the same lens layout with four elements. So it gives you about the same look with these lenses when you're taking photos. And then later came, for the U.S. market, it's uh, X Fujinon 55mm f2. Uh, these used uh, their newer lens mount, and those had their own design with them. They got away from the M42, which was shared with a lot of cameras, um, to their own style of lens mount just would only work with their cameras. Um, the difference in the two optically uh, between the three, they're really similar, um, but the the build quality is not quite as good on these, a little more plastics in them. Um, the lens movement tends to freeze up more on these and uh, your uh, aperture blades tend to stick a little bit more on these than, than the older lenses do. So optically, they're really close between all of them, but uh, the big test today is going to see if there's any radioactivity between these. Um, I use a standard Geiger counter that also picks up, it picks up gamma, uh, beta, and alpha particles with it. Um, and this Radicode 103 is the newest version of their um, meters that... It's a little more accurate if you take a basic room reading in here uh, with nothing close to it. Um, I usually get around uh, 40 counts per minute with this and about 400 with this. So that's, this one's almost uh, 10 times more uh, accurate at picking up um, particles. Um, it really works mostly with gamma and beta, though, whereas this one does a little more with alpha also. Um, the older lens, hold this over here, see what kind of ratings we get. So not much change on the front or back, which pretty much lets us know there's no thorium in the lens at all. Uh, the newest lens here that's made for the U.S. market, the X Fujinon, that one. That radiation we're getting is more of me just moving things around. It'll settle down here. Seem to be getting a slight change with this, but just barely from the front element on it. I really think that's due to me just moving things around. Um, get to this one, the second lens that they made, start picking up a little bit more heat with it. Hold this up to the back. Get a little bit of radiation coming off of it, but you can tell from this, the majority of the radiation is coming from that front element. That's pretty strong there. 
tested with the Radicode 103. You hold it right over the tip. So you can see the readings are way higher because it's um, a little more accurate of a reading with it. And the counts per minute is multiplied. So we're looking at about 17,000 counts per minute with this. Stop the sound on it. Um, this lens has thorium embedded in it. It's not just a coating, but it's actually when they make heat the glass, they use thorium to uh, cut down on some of the reflections in the glass and uh, get a little less um, colors around the images. So something in the distance, like the trees, uh, you may get little blue fringing or some other colored greens fringings on them and putting that thorium in the glass helped um, to cut down on that and made a, a truer to life photo whereas uh, other lenses the newer and the older ones they used a more relied on the coatings on it especially the newer ones has a little bit different coating on it that cuts down on some reflections and you don't get quite uh, the lens flares and uh, some of the things that may you may like or may not like and kind of change the look of your photo a good bit but during this time period they felt that that thorium uh, was a ideal way of uh, getting a better image on them and now we found out that usually don't like to use uh, radioactive materials in glass so you can tell it's the middle model is the one that if you want to find one that has the radioactivity the early models here they have sort of a green markings on them and slightly larger on them but it has this sort of a rainbow mark on it and that's the easiest way to find the older ones and if you want the one with the thorium in it it won't have that rainbow stripe on it that's what you should look for uh, the uh, serial numbers are hard to find on them. They're really small on these, um, but you're looking in the 5,000, 500,000 range to, uh, to find the ones with thorium in them. And just uh, stay away from the X Fujinons with the Fuji mount unless you're wanting to use them on a, an older Fuji camera with that mount. Uh, that's about the only reason to to pick this over another. They're harder to adapt um, and it's harder to use extension tubes, that sort of thing, if you want to use it on a Sony or uh, a newer uh, model camera to adapt it to shoot with. So, yep, these are radioactive, but it's only uh, the model that was made somewhere in the middle range of their lineup. So. Thanks for watching, and uh, like and subscribe. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.